Well, welcome to the shoulder and elbow sections of the course. Um, at, this point, at this point, you should be fairly familiar with the shoulder muscles that you've just constructed. And now we're moving on to muscles that are named for their function and thought of as functioning at the elbow, but due to their proximal attachment, uh, proximal to the shoulder joint, these muscles, especially biceps and triceps, will have function both at the shoulder and the elbow. Uh, during the next construction sequence, we'll be looking at the biceps brachii, anterior and most superficial. Deep to that, the brachialis, primarily only an elbow muscle, and then posteriorly, the three heads of the triceps. Um, just a note about construction. When we attach a muscle and cut that muscle out for attachment, we have to appreciate how long it needs to be to allow full motion in the other direction. So um, for biceps and brachialis, we'll see the anatomical position is the right position for our measurement because it holds the elbow in full extension, which is the fully stretched position of the muscle. But for the triceps, um, the anatomical position is the fully shortened length of the muscle. And if we measure the triceps in that distance, it won't allow full flexion of the elbow. If we look at this elbow, it has no triceps. It can be flexed all the way. But if we look at the right elbow, where I put a triceps that's too short, it stops the flexion. So there's, a, there's an extension contracture on the right caused by a short muscle. Um, so we'll want to make sure that you flex the elbow all the way and measure the distance from underneath the uh, glenoid all the way around the olecranon to be able to figure out how long to make the triceps. Um, what we're learning then is that a muscle, besides activating and shortening and creating a movement, like the triceps causes extension, it also must be long enough to allow full motion in the opposite direction. The clinical um, scenario is that uh, muscle weakness, say in the biceps or brachialis, will prevent a person from regularly flexing the elbow. That will also lead to lack of regular stretching of the triceps. And with the triceps always being in its shortened length, it will develop a contracture and later prevent elbow flexion. So then we have elbow flexion prevented due to weakness in the flexors, but also shortened or a contracture in the extensors. Finally, um, lack of motion can lead to a tertiary problem and that would be joint contraction.